now let's discuss the refraction through prism in this concept the main question is uh, prism formula derive the prism formula so to derive the prism formula <coughs> first of all we have to go through this diagram this the sketch of a prism a b c so in this a b c this a angle b a c is called angle of prism now this a b is one phase and a c is another phase if the angle of if the incident ray is passing like this then it will be refracted and this n1 and n2 is the normal for this ab phase therefore as the incident ray is entering from rarer to denser it comes closer to the normal therefore this would be the path of refracted ray within the prism now after that when it comes out again into the rarer medium it moves away from the normal here n4 n3 is the normal so it moves away from the normal and then this ray is called emergent ray this is incident ray this is refracted ray within the prism and then this is final emergent ray so now if you clear carefully observe we always define the angle of incidence as the angle between the incident ray and the normal therefore here this is at point p it strikes the prism so angle i is the angle of incidence now this is the normal this is emergent ray therefore this is called angle of emergence and it is represented by e now this the angle between the normal and refracted ray this is r1 and then this is r2 this normal and the refracted ray this is r2 this is angle a so in this we are going to establish a relation between angle of the prism then angle of incidence and angle of emergence and the relation between a r1 and r2 so before going into the derivation let me show you the original refraction how does it take place here i have taken a prism you can see this so here i have taken the ray box and this is the prism and then this is incident ray even inside the prism also you can see the bending of light and then this is the final ray of emergence so incident ray inside the prism the refracted ray and then this is emergent ray so from this activity it is confirmed that the light bending of light takes place and we have visualized the refraction within the prism with the help of a ray box and an acrylic prism now let's do the derivation this derivation is very simple first we have to understand the relation between the sum of the three angles of a triangle so if you observe closely the triangle apq it is obvious that angle a plus angle p that means apq and angle q is equal to 180 degrees now angle a and angle p that is apq this whole angle is 90 out of which this is r1 therefore this angle is 90 minus r1 so i can replace this by 90 minus r1 
and then angle Q similarly I can replace it by 90 minus R2 which is equal to 180 now I can cancel my 180 on right side and left side so angle A will be equal to this minus R1 goes to this side plus R1 and minus R2 goes to the right side then it becomes plus R2 and this is my first equation so this equation can be attained very simply with the help of the simple axiom that the sum of the three angles of any triangle is 180 now we have to define the deviation delta angle of deviation is nothing but this this is the incident ray and then this incident ray had there been no prism it would have gone in the lines in through along the <coughs> dotted lines but because of this prism it has moved finally in this direction now if you extend this ray backward direction then you will come to know how much it is deviated it would have gone like this but because of prism it has finally deviated in this direction so the angle of the angle of extended incident ray and extended emergent ray is only known as delta now if you observe triangle o and then this p q so if you observe this angle o p and then q so for your convenience i'll write it again this is delta this angle this is o i named it as o then this is p and then this is q now this whole angle is i <coughs> that is the incident ray and normal is i now out of which this r1 is to be subtracted therefore i minus r1 is this angle and then this will be e minus r2 so now i can write the relation as delta <coughs> is the exterior angle which should be equal to the sum of the two opposite interior angles therefore in triangle opq delta is equal to i <coughs> minus r1 plus <coughs> e minus r2 now this can be written as i plus e minus r1 plus r2 but we already established a relation between r1 and r2 and a so i can replace here i minus e in place of this r1 plus r2 i can replace angle a now a plus delta is equal to i plus e so this is another important equation for us so based on this some numericals can be made can be asked so you can solve it easily with the help of this relation now let me call this as second equation we have already seen that for different angles of incidence different angles of deviation will be there but the angle of <coughs> when we increase the angle of incidence you must have done already the practical uh, the id curve uh, when you increase the angle of incidence the deviation angle will also will be decreased and after certain stage again it starts increasing that means you will have a graph you would have plotted it angle of incidence versus angle of deviation so a graph of 
this shape you would have obtained so it clearly <coughs> indicates when angle of incidence is increased the delta gets decreased and then after this stays the again the delta is increased that means a an angle which is corresponding to this is called d minimum delta m it is practically observed that when delta becomes delta minimum the ray is refracted ray which is passing is parallel to bc that is the pq will be parallel to bc that is first condition observed the second condition is that i is equal to e and r1 is equal to r2 which i can name it as r now what can i do from the first equation r1 plus r2 is equal to a therefore 2r is equal to a which implies r is equal to a by 2 from the second equation a plus delta minimum is equal to i plus e both <coughs> i and e are equal therefore i can write it as 2i now which tells me that angle i is equal to a plus delta minimum by 2 now according to snell's law we know the refractive index is equal to mu which is equal to sin i by sin r so by substituting the values i'll get sin a plus delta minimum by 2 whole by sin a by 2 so this is known as prism formula so some numericals can be asked based on this formula now if you take a thin prism so whenever thin prisms are taken then the angles are considered to be very minimum so we know that when theta tends to 0 sin theta tends to theta therefore for thin prisms this formula can be written as a plus delta by 2 divided by a by 2 remember the sine term <coughs> when theta tends to 0 sine theta tends to theta when a plus delta m a delta m a are very small angles then sin a plus delta m by 2 can be replaced by a plus delta m by 2 and sin a by 2 can be replaced by a by 2 now i can cancel my two then mu times a is equal to a plus delta now delta is equal to mu times mu minus 1 times a because if i take this a to this side mu minus 1 times a so this is again an important derivation an important relation rather between the deviation and then this refractive index and angle of prism now <clears throat> we know that from Cauchy relation that mu is inversely proportional to lambda it's not exactly inversely proportional but mu is equal to some constant plus b by lambda c by lambda cube etc so this is called Cauchy relation that means through this relation we understand that if wavelength is more mu is 
less. So now if you compare two colors, one is red and the other one is violet, we know that lambda r is greater than lambda violet. Now if lambda <coughs> is more, mu is lesser. So mu of red color is less than mu of violet. Now from this relation it follows because when mu is reduced delta is also reduced therefore delta for red is less than delta for V. So this is the reason why when any white light is dispersed the violet gets more deviation and red gets lesser deviation so with this formula with this relation you can explain the <coughs> why violet color is bending more so in this article we have studied the refraction through prism we have seen the refraction through the prism and then we have drawn the sketch and then with the help of <coughs> two simple geometrical facts one is the sum of the three angles of a triangle is 180 the other one is exterior angle is always equal to sum of the two interior angles and then we have taken that when delta is equal to delta m then r1 r2 are same and then angle of incidence and angle of emergence are also same so with the help of this concept we can derive the formula sin a plus delta m by 2 by sin a by 2 is equal to mu. So based on this formula and then this formula and this formula some numericals can be asked. We will practice some numericals in the coming session. So this is prism formula.